Okay, so after a long wait, Godzilla Minus One is finally on Netflix, and for the first time since the movies come out, it came out last December, November in Japan, but for the first time, there's an option to watch the movie with an English dub. Now, personally, when it comes to foreign films, I usually prefer to watch them subbed only because I want to get the full experience, especially if it's a movie that I really care about. If it's one that I have on in the background, it's not really a big deal, but if it's a film that I really want to know everything, I'll go with the sub. However, that does not mean that dubs are bad. In fact, Godzilla Minus One's dub is rather good, and I want to discuss that here on this video. The Shin Gojira... Shin Godzilla dub was done by Funimation, which is now Crunchyroll, featuring some relatively well-known voice actors known for their work in anime, such as Todd Haberkorn, but this dub does not have anything to do with Crunchyroll whatsoever. This was a totally separate company. And this company, I believe, is based in LA, whereas Crunchyroll Funimation are based in Texas. Now, it also seems like the dubbing group is mostly composed of people who are of Asian or Japanese descent. For example, Darren Barnett, who plays Koichi in the dub, he is part Japanese. Now, I'm not entirely certain if that is done on purpose because there's been a movement in the past few years when it comes to dubbing, you know, anime specifically, where it seems like some companies are trying to match up the ethnicity or the race of the person voicing them from the character, which that in and of itself is controversial, not just because there are voice actors that are obviously more talented, irregardless of what color their skin is, it just some people are just more talented and have more range, but also because a lot of these foreign stories, even like not just Japan, but other countries, feature science fiction elements and it features aliens that aren't human but that look human but they're not human and thus how would you match it to an actor that's from earth you understand what i'm saying for example goku from dragon ball z is played by a white guy sean Schemmel. goku some would say he's japanese but he's really not he's an alien in the story he's an alien and so he might look like a caucasian in some aspects, but is that a fair casting choice? I mean, at this point, he's been voicing Goku now for 30 years, and I'm not expecting it to change almost 30 years. But uh, it is a situation where some dubbing groups from now on have been doing that. However, the important thing is, can they really nail the lines? That's what it comes down to. And some of the other characters, like Mizushima, is voiced by Koi Dao, and that's another, you know, Asian American. These voice actors are not well known in the sense of like a lot of other people within voice acting circles. Like not all of them are household names or even ones that have been in shows that you've heard about. You know, for example, Kyung Sim plays Kenji Noda, which is the scientist, Doc as they say. And he was actually a live action actor who used to play in this old medical drama called Monday Mornings. So, and he's also Vietnamese and, oh no, he's born in Vietnam, but his parents are Korean. So again, they do seem to have Asian Americans playing these characters. And the important thing to me though is, did they nail the roles? And I have to say first and foremost that as far as the accuracy of the script goes, it's very, very close to the Japanese. There were obviously some small changes made, and there were obviously things that had to be made to fit the mouth flaps as best they could, which is very difficult for live action. But there were concessions made, and I still recommend watching it in Japanese. It's the purest version. However, I'm smart enough to know that a lot of people just don't read fast. They have trouble reading subtitles. Some people are visually impaired to where they have to have the screen very close to their face to read the subtitles, as well as there's, you know, younger people who just don't have the patience. And that's something I've had to kind of learn myself in the past few years, being a purist of so much anime on my main channel, that it's tough for some people genuinely to read subtitles. 
But thankfully, with Godzilla minus one, the voices seem to match very well. The performances are fun. It's missing a little bit of the charisma. For example, Captain just comes off really a bit funnier in the Japanese uh, to me. But the actor does a relatively good job. Now, there are some scenes, however, where I compared them to the Japanese. Namely, the scene in Ginza after Godzilla fires the heat ray and nukes the city. There's that scene of Koichi where you have the black rain falling on him and the performer, the, the actor from the Japanese version, Rinosuke Kamiki, his performance there, his scream of just absolute horror and hatred is second to none. And even though the English actor tried his best, it just wasn't anywhere near as powerful as Kamiki's performance, not even in the same stratosphere. And this is not to say, this is not to say that Darren Barnett is not talented or not that great of an actor. That is not what I'm saying. It's more so a testament to the incredible performance from Ryosuke Kamiki. Because he just, he was so good in this movie. His eyes, the way that he thinks about things, his look of just shock and awe and horror. Like, the actors in this film, the best thing that they did, the reason why the Ginza attack was so convincing is because they were able to, with Takashi Yamazaki bringing the camera down to street level, we were able to actually see the absolute look of horror and fear and awe at this giant monster about to end their lives. And the faces that these actors made is really what carried the performances and really what made this movie seem like if Godzilla were real, this is how it would go. It didn't have any goofy science fiction. It didn't have any like man-made invention, which even the first Godzilla movie had, The Auction Destroyer. Here, it is, we have to beat this thing. We're going to use real science to figure out a way to do it, which is what they did. And we are screwed if we don't. That's basically what the story is here. And the execution of the story from the filmmaker has always been great. I still think this movie is the best movie of 2023. Even though Oppenheimer is a great film, I'm not taking anything away from that movie. But the point is that as much as these actors did well, and maybe now this movie can be seen by a younger audience who doesn't want to read subtitles, at the same time, like I said, the Japanese actors, they had a very special crew for this film and a very special cast that did phenomenal work. Also, did you hear that this movie apparently cost less than $10 million? So people were saying $15 million a few months ago and kind of shitting on Hollywood for having these big budgets and Godzilla Minus One did it without that because it's really the story that counts more than anything. Still, it's one of those things where, wow, like, this was phenomenal. This was, you know, they did a good job with the dub and I can't complain about it. I really can't because it's just minor stuff. I think the performances were very strong in the original film, but if you're with, you know, if you have kids, this movie's not really a kid movie because... The th it's not even like super violent or even like profane or nudity. That's not what I'm talking about. The story is so mature that it, you know, it won't resonate that much. However, I might be wrong about that because I watched the film a couple days ago with my friends. They brought over their kids. One of their kids is 12. The other one is, I think, 14. And the 12-year-old even got teary-eyed, according to what he said. So... It's one of those things where maybe I'm wrong. Maybe young people can sit through subtitles, but it's probably easier just to put the dub on. However, you might miss something, so it just depends on how your brain is wired. Either way, this was a good English dub, and uh, hopefully now more people will see Godzilla, even though, to be honest, I'm still irritated that they didn't listen to what I was telling them and went to go see it in the movie theater because that's a theatrical experience that I'll never forget. That's all I have to say. I'll catch you down the road.